Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to DNews Plus today. I am Trace, and this week we're talking about sharks, because it's Shark Week. I even wore a shirt special for it. This week we're going to talk about what sharks are, where they came from, how they evolved, if they're dangerous to us, or if we're a danger to them. Spoiler alert, we're a danger to them more so. And we're also going to talk about their effect on their ecosystems and their importance on this planet and how great they are and how awesome their biology is. I love Shark Week. This is the best. But first, make sure you subscribe so you get all of our episodes here. And also you can check us out on iTunes. We have an audio podcast that we release. At least we try to every week. Sorry if uh, you've gone over there and we didn't have one out. Check today. Maybe we will. What are sharks? I mean, we all know what sharks are. Like in our minds, you have an idea of what a shark is. It's this large, sleek-looking apex predator awesomeness of the ocean. But specifically, sharks are in the Chondriachthys class, more modernly known as Elasmobranx, a.k.a. cartilaginous fish. Think cartilage. Ain't got no bones. It's just cartilage in there. This group also includes rays and skates and chimeras, not the fictional creature when real fish, they're deep sea weird looking. Names like ratfish, elephant fish, dwarf, sickle fish, Pacific spoon fish, pale ghost shark, pointy nosed blue. I feel like Dwayne the bartender from that movie in Hawaii. But basically, this means that if you're a shark, you don't have bones, you just have cartilage. And you probably know what cartilage is, hopefully. It's the stuff that makes up your nose and your ears and you know helps line some of your joints. Another way to classify sharks is their teeth. They have many rows of teeth. This is something that's very famous about sharks. They continuously grow and replace new teeth over time. They also have gills because sharks are fish. Uh, the opposite of a bony fish, though, a, a fish with bones, also known as a bony fish, uh, would have one gill slit on each side usually, but sharks could have five gill slits or more, six or seven. It's pretty incredible. They also have rigid fins as opposed to bony fish who have more flexible, kind of floppy fins. And sharks also have pretty amazing scales. They go one way and they're kind of spiky. I've actually touched them. They feel like sandpaper going one way and they're very smooth the other way. It's incredible. And sharks have detached upper jaws. If you think about yourself for a minute, hi, self, uh, most animals have a lower jaw. It moves like you and me, ah, yeah, 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 lower jaw. But sharks, they're different. They move their entire jaw because they have a detached upper jaw. And that way they can attack their prey by reaching out with their face. I think you can see sharks are pretty unique. They have like superpowers. I mean, that's what it seems like, right? Like in the animal kingdom, this is one animal that has all these things, and we aren't even done yet. They got more. How do they evolve to do this, though? Like, how did they get to be this incredible? Sharks evolved 400 to 450 million years ago. We don't know exactly when, because unlike bony animals, where their bones fossilize, sharks don't really leave fossils. They just leave their teeth behind. They leave imprints, and sometimes scales have been found. One of the oldest evidence of shark scales was found in Siberia, and it dates to about 420 million years ago during the Silurian periods. North America was underwater, and fish would have finally developed jaws about this time, and the first plants started growing on land, and this is when sharks showed up. That's right, sharks are like as old as some of the first land plants. But all they found were scales. We don't really know that much about the early shark. But sharks evolved, like anything else. Survival of the fittest, you know, they survived over various mass extinctions. We may be entering our sixth one now, and they've been around for quite a while. So scientists think their flexible jaws may have evolved so they could eat things that were bigger than themselves. It's a survival tactic. Their tail may have evolved so they could swim faster and farther and got more muscly. Again, survival use. And at certain points, some sharks adapted to not even eat meat. They would just filter plankton out of the water instead of being predators because there was probably some advantage to that. When oxygen was scarce in the water, sharks would evolve to swim deeper or more shallowly. And this is how they escaped things like the Great Dying, one of the more famous extinctions throughout history. 
Some sharks glowed in the dark, some sharks grew really big, some sharks were really small, some sharks looked like eels, and they would have rows of flat teeth instead of razor sharp ones so they could have eaten plants maybe. Some had really weird teeth like the buzz saw shaped teeth that you may have seen on discoverynews.com, now seeker.com. That one's really crazy. You can Google uh, the helicoprion. It's really awesome and also crazy to think that that was part of a living thing. So there wasn't just one thing that made sharks survive this long. It's almost more that the shark was able to evolve and adapt to all of these differing changes that Earth has gone through in the last few hundred million years. And a lot of crazy stuff has happened to our planet, to be sure. And sharks were really good at escaping and surviving and adapting, so they were able to live as long as they have. So today, we now interact with sharks on a pretty regular basis. I mean, at least annually, if you are a Shark Week fan, as obviously I am. But there's evidence of early North Americans learning to catch and eat sharks. And many experts tag Aristotle as one of the first to study sharks. So humans also have this long history of interaction with these fish. Aristotle has works from 330 BCE that mention observations of sharks. Of course, it's not like you could take a picture, uh, so there weren't really images, and he referred to them in the names that were given to them by the fishermen that were local to him at the time. So we don't know exactly what sharks he was writing about or what they looked like, really, but he wrote about shark nurseries and about anatomy of sharks and how they gave birth. Uh, Pliny the Elder, we talked about him before. I actually mispronounced his name. Sorry, buddy. Friend of the show. Uh, he recorded an early interaction with humans and sharks, which he called dogfish. Uh, he talked about sponge divers having to fight the dogfish, and they would go after the loins and the heels of the divers, and the divers would have to fight back. But because dogfish are as afraid of humans as we are of them, that was also part of this tale. But over time, not many observations were made of sharks because humans weren't pushing out into the ocean. They were fishing, right? And mostly they were fishing in rivers and nearby the shore because that was where the fish were. No need to go fish into the deep ocean. Why would you sail all the way out there? There's plenty of fish right here, especially in freshwater areas where rivers and lakes have plenty of fish. So shark study, not the best in the Middle Ages probably could have guessed that. But in Europe in the 16th and 17th centuries, with the rise of the gentleman scientists, they started studying and cataloging species, including the dissection of a great white shark head. Imagine being the first person to do that. Whoa. But there was still a disconnection between sharks and science. People still thought fossilized shark teeth. <laughs> they thought they were dragon tongues. Science has really come a long way in some ways. The first major work on the study of sharks wasn't until the early 19th century. Now, besides scientists studying sharks, obviously sailors were interacting or coming across sharks quite often, especially sailors who were traveling in the New World to the Caribbean. They first recorded shark attack on a human in the New World. That was in the mid-1500s, which um, where a Spaniard forced a native slave to dive for a pearl, despite him saying that there was a large fish down there that wanted to eat the native man. The native man dove and was eaten by what the experts think was probably a great white. Nice job, Spaniards. Way to go. As time went on, more studies of sharks happened, more shark attacks on humans happened, uh, and eventually the shark would be cemented as this vicious predator of the deep, which makes it sound like a supervillain, but it's not. Out of World War II, there came a lot of stories of downed men who were attacked by sharks, the USS Indianapolis being a very famous case of that. The Navy studied these claims, and they wanted to figure out a way to repel the sharks in the case of a downed ship or a downed airplane. Jaws came out, very famous movie, added to fear of sharks, and people started hunting them, and they started killing them just because they were afraid, and they wanted to preemptively stop them from attacking them. And the scary image of sharks continued, but eventually plans came into place to protect these apex predators, which is great, because come on, Shark Week should not be about how scary they are, it should be about how great and incredible they are. Because sharks 
are important to ecosystems. They're important to the balance of nature, and they are just plain incredible creatures. We'll get into that in the next episode. We're gonna talk about the biology now that you understand the history of sharks and everything. So make sure you subscribe so you get more D News Plus. If you don't wanna wait until tomorrow, you can tune in to Discovery Channel all this week for everything Shark Week. It's gonna be amazing. You can eat it all up. It's a good shark pun. Also, let us know down in the comments. If you ever touched a shark, do you have a history of, you know, you see a shark somewhere, you have a cool story about sharks, let us know, because we want to hear about it. Shark Week. You should live every week like it's Shark Week. It'd be amazing. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow on D News Plus.